Hi guys, hope you're all well. So I'm just popping on to do a bit of a video today about um, a topic that I was asked to sort of talk about um, a few sort of weeks ago, which I haven't got around to sort of doing yet. And that was about my beliefs, my understandings of heaven and hell, and also the energies of what we put into in this world, how are we sort of actioned and how are we accountable in the next life. So I thought it was a really, really interesting question. It's a very deep question. There's lots of layers and lots of sort of pieces to this. And I do sort of talk quite a lot about this in my book, Spirit Magic. So for anybody that wants to sort of invest in that, there's quite a lot about it in there. So I thought I would share my experiences, my beliefs and my views with you around these subject matters. And you can sort of do what you want with the information. Now, what I want to say as well, these ideas, these beliefs that I have, these are from what spirit have made me feel or shown me firsthand. And they're also my beliefs, and my ways of in the world. So I'm just going to say with this, guys, you might agree with some of this stuff. You might not. And that's completely fine. That's completely OK. If it sits with you, brilliant. If it doesn't. I'm not sort of saying that you must or you have to actually, um, you know, take the learnings and everything else. You, you do what you want with the information, but I can only talk about this from my own level of understanding. Now, what's really interesting as well, it's just made me laugh in the background. Before I come on to do a video, I always make sure my lights, I don't know if you can see them at the side there, that they go around my, um, I'll show you quickly, they go around my altar. Well, I always make sure that they're on still so they're not flashing and annoying me in the video. So we've obviously got spirits in the room at the moment because um, they've sort of decided to go and flash. And then down on the floor, which never happens, I've got my, uh, I don't know if you can see this, I've got my little dog Oski, oops, just chilling out, going to sleep. Now that never happens as well normally. So really, really interesting. Okay, so let me just set that back up. Okay, cool. I apologise in advance as well if you hear any random barkings or if Oski suddenly sort of jumps out of the room. So, heaven and hell then. Now, being that I am a sort of pagan witch, I don't actually believe in heaven or hell because that is actually, in my beliefs, um, it's very biblical, okay? I feel that that is something that was brought around through religion to sort of condition, to scare people, to keep people caught up in fear. So I don't actually believe in heaven or hell. I don't believe that there is a big sort of guy in the sky and in the clouds dictating what happens in the next realm. And I don't believe that there is a sort of uh, devil with horns poking people in the fires for all eternity. I believe in energy. I work very much with energy. So I believe that there are realms of light and I believe that there are realms of darkness and they're not just one single energy within that sort of realm. There are loads of pockets of different vibrations. So really, when we talk about heaven and hell, what's more important is to be accountable for the actions in this lifetime. So I'm a big believer in how we live life in the here and now determines the experience and determines what happens in the next life. And I believe that when we sort of are finished in this physical world, our eternal soul, our spirit will venture, it will leave the vessel, it will leave this physical world and it will go to one of these realms or one of these vibrations of light or dark, depending on how we've chosen to be within this lifetime. So I believe that if you've lived a life with a good heart and you've done your absolute best to be a good, you know, good person, I believe that you will transition to one of the vibrations, one of the realms of light. Also what people may conceive to be a type of heaven. And for anybody that is on a low vibration, if you've done bad things, if you've murdered, if you've killed people, if you've hurt people, if you've been abusive and all these really sort of nasty toxic energies um, I feel that you'll be on the lower vibrations and from what spirit have shown me time and time again the lower vibrations can never come up to the higher vibrations 
the higher vibrations, if they wanted to, could venture to the lower energies, but very often they wish not to do that. So in a way as well, it's really important to, to know that loved ones are safe. Now, it's very often said throughout folklore and through history that the energy of Earth is actually almost symbolic for being heaven and hell in one dimension, in one space and time. And I suppose if you think about it, we all have amazingly positive experiences that can at times feel like being in a place of heaven. And we also have really dark, crappy stuff that all of us here on earth at some stage will go through. And at times that might feel like a living hell. It might feel like hell on earth. And earth itself is a realm, is a place where we're here to learn, we're here to grow, we're here to sort of transform in the sort of time that the universe gifts us to have. So it's very interesting, okay? But I am a firm believer that what we do in the here and now very much carves the footprints and the vibrations for the next realm. And that's what it's all about. You know, so many people get caught up in thinking that loved ones go on in the next sort of realms as they are physically now. And of course, that's not the case. You know, if you think of like when the sun shines through a window, that beautiful energy of light coming in, that vibration of light, that is really what your loved ones are when they transition. They become part of that universal light of energy. They don't have physical form. And sometimes when I do readings and I might say to people, oh, I'm seeing your mum or your dad or whoever, people have said to me, well, how do you know what they look like? And that's the great thing with light. When spirits sort of show themselves to me, it's almost like a negative and it's very quick, it's very brief and it's like an imprint. So their energies are imprinting an image upon me of how they would have looked when they had physical form, but they don't hold or have that anymore, but they just bring that forward so I can clearly see an image and then that becomes fixed here and that almost opens up the doorway of telepathic communication between the realms. So it's not like I'm having a conversation and talking to you now. That's not how the spirit world works. It's it's so more com uh, complicated. It's almost like a different vibration, a different language of its own. But once you understand the language, that's when you can have these really magical conversations with the higher realms, or in some cases, the lower realms. Um, now, somebody sort of said about, they saw a post about an animal being abused and how it made them really, really cross and really, really angry. And what happens to those types of people? Well, I believe that if karma doesn't catch them in this time, then certainly when they transition, that will become almost their karmatic debt. And basically, if they have hurt, if they've caused pain, if they've caused upset, I believe from what spirit have shown me that they will automatically go into a low vibration and they will at some point, not necessarily immediately, but at some point they will become reincarnated and they will have to relive a life. They will have to relearn from the wrongdoings that weren't sort of corrected in this life. And it might be that that cycle continues time and time and time again until the lesson is learnt. And once the lesson is learnt, then the frequencies can start to change. And it's really important to remember that within all of us, we hold light and dark, but it really depends on you know which energy we as individuals choose to feed. You know, if I wanted to, I could be a right nasty bastard, I could be a right asshole, but I choose to stand and to, for the best of my abilities, to work within the light, because for me, that is where my moral compass lies. Some people, unfortunately, are not at that level of awakened state, and so they will cause hurt, they will cause pain, and they won't give it any second thought, unfortunately. And it's, it's really complicated, isn't it? Because for us, very often we can't comprehend that way of being, but it shows the energy vibrations that we're on against those around us. The other three, the really, really important thing to recognise as well, um, because this person that was chatting to me was sort of saying how by seeing this animal that was abused, she saw this story, this post about it, she was really, really angry, she was really, really sort of um, pissed off. 
And I completely become, understand you would be pissed off, you would be upset because a lot of us have empathy and, you know, feel those energies, don't we, when we see those tragic stories. And I think it's really important to remember as well about taking personal accountability. This is so important. So, of course, you can experience those feelings of hurt, of pain, of distress. Appreciate, recognise that they're there within you. But the key thing is to then detach from them. And, you know, you might wonder well, why to detach from it. And at the end of the day, if you are feeling a certain way, that abuser, that person, they don't know it's caused you those feelings of pain. And what we have to think is where does that energy go? Because when we build up any energy, whether it's good or bad, positive or negative, light or dark, it goes somewhere and it goes out into the universe. So absolutely hold on to those feelings, um, you know, recognise them, but then actually give yourself permission to let them go. But let them go with love. And that can be really, really hard because sometimes people think, well, why would I send love to someone that's caused abuse and everything else? And it's not actually about that person. It's about turning that negative energy into something positive. So when it gets sent out into the universe, you're sending out love. Because if you're sending out negativity, if you're sending out hurtful um, or frustrated feelings, the only person that gets hurt is yourself. And you run the risk of amplifying and bringing more hurt back into your personal world. Okay, so it's really, really important to hold space, recognise it exists, honour it, but then try and transmute the energy of it, try and turn it inside out. And if anything, send healing for that person, send love for that sort of situation in its entirety without getting involved in the sort of uh, deeper aspects of, well, that person doesn't deserve love. It's not for us to say what a person deserves. And actually, when all is said and done, regardless of what somebody has put somebody through, I personally feel we are all entitled to receive the vibrations of love. But, you know, that is really, I feel, what we're here to experience on Earth, um, the unconditional love. Unconditional love with no strings, with no attachments, okay? So it's really, really important to sort of try and hold space and honour that. And it isn't always easy. It sometimes can be really hard. It's like I've got, as a lot of you know, ongoing issues with my neighbours and there are days where it gets the better of me. And this is something I have to start taking my own advice for. I have to really start just disconnecting, send these people love, because half the time they don't know if they've upset me or not and they don't actually care. This is the thing, you know, what, regardless of how I've been made to feel, won't change what they're doing. They will do what they want to do. So... Why would I then send all of that garbage, all of that, you know, frustration out to the universe just for the universe to then continue to build and amplify that? That doesn't make sense because I'm actually just ending up hurting myself. So I need to pull that back, try and disconnect from it and just send these people love, send them unconditional love, the situations, the things that they put me through or whatever might be going on. Just send it love because love is the vibration that will heal and will overcome everything that's going on. And sometimes people will feel like they can't do it. And that's fine. But if you can't do it, it's about going deeper with the energy. It's about challenging it back. And maybe within that experience, that is part of your lesson. That is part of your journey here on earth to learn, you know, why you feel you can't perhaps do any of these things. And it is really, really hard particularly for people that have been abused or see abuse. But, you know, it isn't about the abuser necessarily. It's about transmuting the energy. But I am a massive believer what we do in this lifetime, not just our big sort of, you know, um, exciting adventures and everything else, all the little day to day runnings. You know, the, the universe is a conscious mind that's listening to us 24 seven in all of our times of greatness and achievement, but also probably even more in our times of frustration, in our times of uncertainty. So be very, very mindful about what you personally choose to send out to the world. Be very mindful what about you, what you personally 
react to, how you respond to things, you know. You cannot be accountable for other people's inputs and outputs and we can never be accountable for how people receive our energy. But always recognise how you are being, you know. Work from that moral compass and always check in and sort of recognise what direction is it pointing. And as long as you know within your own heart centre you're working for the highest of good and everything that you're doing is, you know, from the right place, that's all you need. And those will be the energies that set you up for the next realm, the next dimension. So when eventually you transition from this physical world, this 3D world that we're all in, and eventually you go into that place of spirit realm, that place of light, truth and unconditional love, you will then have the opportunities to be at complete rest and at complete peace with yourself. And some people also say they feel that earth is actually hell. They feel it's like a living hell. And it's really interesting, isn't it? And I think that earth is yin and yang. It's, it holds the energy of both. It's, it's a neutral. I feel that energy very often is neutral. And actually, how we choose to respond to something will determine if that vibration is a high positive or a lower negative. So it's interesting. So for me, heaven and hell, not so much in that biblical uh, structured sense. A realm of light, yes. A realm of darkness, absolutely. And within those realms or dimensions, loads of different vibrations, loads of different almost sound waves or energy waves. So I don't feel it's so easy as just saying there's light and dark because and I and I mean within those realms like thousands of different levels and vibrations. That's what I really feel because what I do notice as well when spirit link, sometimes you might get someone that's in a realm of light, but the communication is still quite wishy washy. It's quite poor. And then you get the other side of it. You might get somebody that's more established and can come through with so much evidence. And this is the other thing. You know, sometimes people say, well, why, is these, why aren't these people coming through? And it doesn't just depend on how they've passed. It depends on how they've lived life all throughout their timeline of events, because all of that gets reviewed. That's my belief anyway. Now, like I say, you may choose to believe that, you may choose to disagree with that, and that's absolutely fine. People also ask me about God. Does God exist? And I talk about this in my book, Spirit Magic, as well. And for me we are God. God lives within the heart of you and it lives within the heart of I. I believe that God is all around us. You know, God is the breath of life. God is the sea, the stars, the earth, the moon, the sun. God is the trees singing in the wind, the birds, you know, God is everything, everything living, the soil, the sand, you know. I believe that God is all around us, but I don't believe in a biblical character of God, okay? But I believe that God resides in my heart centre as well as your own. So that's also something to think about. So I hope that this video helps. I hope I haven't got, gone sort of too deep with this, but it is really interesting and I do think it's important to keep it real. And, you know, um, I do believe as well in things like angels and other sort of beings, but again, not necessarily in always how they're portrayed, um, you know. And I, I just think though, live your best life in the here and now, and don't hurt, don't harm anybody. Live your truth, have fun, and really, really give yourself permission to receive the best of what this world has to offer. And if you are presented with something tricky, something challenging, something unpleasant, obviously go through those sort of other feelings and emotions that might come up for you, but also hold space and don't let those start to dictate or tell you how to live your life. Stay focused and stay in control because I do feel that, at, you know, at all times we are the, the doorkeeper of our own destiny, okay? So I'm gonna leave this with you. I hope it might help, I hope it might resonate. Take care, stay well and safe, much love and blessings, and I'll talk and see you again in the near future. Bye for now.